All right. Um, yeah, I guess we can get started. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Whoa, whoa, loud. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Hi, my name is Nick. All right. Um, yeah, this is kind of loud. I feel like, uh, you know, like those singers, like on um, like boy bands and everything with the headsets? This is good for people with no hair. Because, with hair, I mean. Because with no hair like me, you just see the whole thing around. Anyways. Um, hey, welcome. It's 6 p.m. You guys are real troopers. It's amazing. I mean, seriously, like, Ukrainian developers, really dedicated. In the U.S., 5 o'clock, everybody's out, you know? It's like, but they show up early, though. You guys were late. So, anyways, um, th this is kind of an interesting setup. I feel like there's a big gap. You know, like, when you go to the zoo, and the audience is there, <laughs> and there's, like, some kind of a dangerous animal, and there's a pit here, you know? So that the gorilla cannot hit you, you know? So, I guess I'm gonna have to stay here. This is like my happy zone. Okay, good. So, don't worry, the Canadian doesn't bite. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, thanks for coming, guys. It's uh, last session of the day. Did you guys have a good time today? Was it a good day for you? Yeah? Was worth it? Excellent. I had a blast. This is really cool. First time in Eastern Europe, in Ukraine, in Kiev, and first time doing a conference here. Really enjoyed it, and you guys have been really awesome with the welcome I've been getting here. So, um, for those of you that have not, so who attended my session earlier on Xamarin? Just curious. So, okay, so apparently I did a good job, because you all came back, most of you, so that's good. If none of you had seen my session, I would have been like, wow, I must have really sucked. Um, <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, thanks for coming back. And um, so let, let's talk about mobile development again. So earlier today, and, and of course, for those of you that, like, like the two of you maybe that have not seen my session, uh, where were you, first of all? <laughs> and uh, so I have to make sure not to breathe too hard in this thing. Um, so for the few of you that have not seen my session on Xamarin, uh, don't worry, the, the, the session on Xamarin was not a requirement for this one. It's just that I'm talking about mobile development in both. And um, so basically, earlier we were talking about the client side, you know, how to build the actual client application, uh, whether it's for iOS, for Android, or for Windows, using C-sharp. Um, now we're gonna look at the cloud side, because um, any good app needs to have a cloud backend. So it's all about building the cloud backend. There's a part of me that just wants you guys to take your chairs and get closer or something, because this is kind of weird. So feel free to do it if you want. Um, Anyways, so, so my name is Nick Landry, by the way. Just, you all know me anyways. You were all at my previous talk. Um, yeah, there you go. Thank you so much. Dave. Come on, who's going to join him? Come on, who's going to join him? Get your cha chairs closer. This is awesome. I love it. This is good. See, now that's the way it is. No more pit, no more save zone. And you guys will see the code. See, this, this is great. I love you guys. See, Ukrainians, awesome. You get, for those of you who are not Ukrainians, I'm sure you're nice too. Um, all right, there you go. This is great. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. So my name is Nick Landry. I'm a technical evangelist for Microsoft. Uh, I'm originally from Canada in Montreal, and, uh, but I live in New Jersey now. I'm part of the New York team, so I work in New York and New Jersey and everything. Um, if you do take awesome pictures like the nice lady here in front, make sure to post it on Twitter and tag at ActiveNick. You go there, you all hit follow. That's pretty much the rule. So there you go. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about mobile development. We're going to look at cross-platform, basically, backends for your application. So the cool thing is everything you're going to learn here applies to any kind of mobile app that you're building. So whether it's an iOS app, an Android app, a Windows app, or even a web app, actually. You can build a mobile web app or any kind of application and use it. Um, and it's not just for Xamarin or C Sharp. You can actually use this if you're building for iOS uh, with Objective-C. You can use it if you're building for uh, Android and Java, whatever. The cool thing is Azure does not discriminate. Everybody's welcome. So we're going to talk at, uh, about mobile services, for uh, basically services for mobile developers. There are pretty much like three important things that you need as a mobile developer. 
And I feel that now that you're close to me, you must think that this is really loud. So <laughs> anyway, hopefully it's all right. If you start moving back, maybe we can tell the sound guy to move the <laughs> volume down. Um, OK, so we're going to look at storage, first of all. I mean, sooner or later, your app is going to have to store something in the cloud uh, or retrieve something from the cloud. And then we're going to look at authentication as well. Super important, because if you're going to store your data in the cloud, you don't want him to get your data, right? And vice versa. I mean, who knows what you're putting in the cloud, right? So you want to make sure that you only see your data and that you don't see somebody else's data and everything is secure, everything is private. So authentication is going to make sure that you can identify yourself to the cloud. And then you say, hey, the data I'm putting there, um, it's hands off for anybody else. And then um, given that this is only an hour long session, I don't think I'm really going to have time to talk about notification hubs much. This is the part where if you want to send notifications from the cloud to the client. Because initiating the communication from the client is kind of easy in a way, because you open a connection to the server, you retrieve something, you save something, you're done. It's when you have to reverse the tables and the server has to contact the client, that's when it gets a little harder. Um, I do have a couple examples I can show you. Um, at least there's going to be a few pieces of code. And also, I've got some great code on GitHub you can go look at. I'll give you all that uh, information. Um, I, I'm not sure if I should take questions along the way. I mean, we'll see. If you have a really pressing question you really need to ask, um, you can ask. But if I feel like I'm losing control, I'm not going to have enough time to finish, uh, I'm going to put an end to it. OK, just very quickly, uh, iOS developers in a room. OK, two, three, four, OK. Uh, Android developers in the room, five. Uh, Windows device developers, Windows Phone, Windows Store, a few more of you, excellent. Web developers, a whole bunch of you, probably. OK, cool. Anybody use Azure already, like the cloud? Anybody use an other cloud than Azure? OK, you got to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, <laughs> this is not going to fly. <laughs> You're using both. That's OK. All right. I'm just kidding. It's fine. It's OK. But we're better. I mean, you probably know that by now. Um, OK. Um, so anybody here also already published an app before? Have like an app in any store? Just a few of you. What are you guys waiting for? I mean, we live in a day and age. I mean, don't look at the slide here because this is not really encouraging. Um, we look in a day and age. We live in a day and age where any developer that has an idea can build it, and then you can submit it. You don't need to build relationships with stores or with channels or you know, build distribution deals or anything. No, do you just pay your, for your subscription, and, which is usually pretty cheap, unless it's Apple, because that's always more expensive. Um, no, it's true. And, um, and then you submit it to the store, and that's it. You, you immediately can reach people in 190 countries. I mean, how awesome is that, at a push of a button? So however, it's not easy. I mean, building the app is easy. Making money is not easy. Because there's some statistics that show that for of all the developers that build mobile apps, the ones that actually intend, yeah, I kind of move people around, as you can see, um, of the, the ones that intend to make money, that are doing it really to make money. Because there's some people that are just doing it you know, to learn, for fun, or whatever. But of the ones that really want to make money, 17% um, of those poor people make no money at all. None. And then there's another something like, if I remember correctly, 18% or so that makes less than $100 a month. And then there's another 20 some percent on top of that that make less than $500 a month. Um, so basically that's like over 50% of mobile developers that want to make money that make basically not enough money to quit their job. Because I don't know about you, but I don't know what the cost of living here is, but uh, I would not quit my job for $500 a month. So anyway, but the reason why I'm telling you this is because if I don't want to discourage you from building apps. And the bottom line is you should build apps, first of all, for yourself. You should be your first user. Build an app that you will use. Because if, if you're not going to use your own app, I mean, what makes you think that others will, really? So build an app for yourself. Be your first user. Learn from it and then grow from there. All the skills that you pick up as you build mobile apps, you can put them in your resume. And then you can get better jobs, a better salary, stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, while you're going to be building apps, 
you want to minimize your risk. You don't want to make investments because if you're not going to make any money or very little money, the last thing you want is to lose money. So we're going to have to look at how can we minimize our risk. And of course, I mean, all of these are very successful apps, right? I don't have to tell you about them like Uber. I mean, I love the example of Uber. Is Uber here in Ukraine? You don't have Uber, but you know about it, right? Okay, what are they waiting for? Seriously, you should write to them and say, hey, come on. Do you have Lyft or others? No. Anyway, so Uber, but you know what it is, right? Okay, good. But that's a company, think about it, that's just through the power of mobile apps. This is a company that has managed to completely revolutionize the transportation industry. Even though they don't own a single vehicle and they don't hire a single driver. And yet they've completely turned the transportation industry on its head. Why? Because it's the power of mobile apps. But it's not just the mobile app itself, because the mobile app alone cannot do it. With Uber, the power is there's a back end. There's a back end so that whenever you need a car, you pull out your phone. Let's say you're not in Ukraine. I'm sorry, guys. That's a bad example, probably. Um, you pull, it's, it's all, Uber is really awesome. Um, you pull out your phone and you say, hey, I need a car here now. And then it just checks for GPS. Where are you? It shows you the cars in the area. And then it sends a signal to all the drivers around you. And then the, the closest driver has 15 seconds to accept or reject the call. And if they reject it or if they don't answer in time, it goes to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. You just wait there. Usually within a minute, it tells you there's a driver on its way. And then the driver will come over to you. Your credit card is already on file. It's cheaper than cabs. They pick you up. You say where you want to go. They drop you off. You leave. You're done. You don't have to pay cards. You don't have to give money. There's no receipts. Everything is done via the app. It's really cool. But it's all possible, of course, because your credit card information is on the cloud and it's saved in your account. Um, your, um, your location is reported to the driver via the cloud. So it's the cloud that connects all of these things together. Think Twitter. I mean, you do have Twitter, right? So, okay. No, no, I mean, I had to ask. Um, so Twitter, imagine that you get a new phone or a new device. You install the Twitter app and then you have to start Refollowing all the people you were following because Twitter forgot. You know, it was all on your other phone, and now when you go to your new phone, you have to say, Oh, I want to follow this person and this person and this person. No, you just log in with your account, and immediately, there you go. You, you, everybody that you were following, your Twitter account just picks up exactly where it left off. So you might say, Well, the, yeah, that's a given. I, I understand that. But the key is you have to do the same thing in your own app. So if you're capturing like user preferences or if the user is saving any kind of data, the last thing that the user wants is to lose that data if they move off to a new device. That's why you need to adopt the cloud. But then, of course, building your own backend can either be easy or it can be hard. So all the others, same thing. WhatsApp, it's basically just a list of chats that you have with people all connected to the cloud, even the weather. You know, the weather comes from the cloud. You can save your favorite cities, your home cities, your traveling cities, and stuff like that. Uh, Microsoft Health, Fitbit, and everything, they save your health information connected from the fitness tracker in the cloud so you can see over time if your health is improving or if you're just getting fatter like me. Um, and then, you know, it tells you basically, yeah, I don't need an app to tell me I'm out of shape, but still, if you don't know, it can tell you. So this is all good and fine, but at the same time, you need to make sure that building all of this is not going to cost you any money, especially if you don't know if you're going to make any money from the app. And the estimates are that anywhere from 53 to 62% of the development cost of an app are associated with the infrastructure of the app. So not what the app actually does, but more what is required for the app to work, including all the backend stuff. So I don't know about you, but I want to take that cost down to like virtually nothing if I can. I basically want no risk whatsoever. And at least I want to pay only if I make money. Because if I made no money, it shouldn't cost me anything. And if I do make money, then I'll pay. That's fine. I'll just pay a percentage of what I've paid or whatever. But at least there's no risk for me. And that's pretty much what I'm going to show you today is how you can start using cloud services, and there's a nice, large, like free tier that you can use. That's like no risk. 
And usually if your app doesn't work, it's gonna stay within that free tier. So earlier today I talked about Xamarin. It was basically just to show how you can do C Sharp across the board. Uh, but of course everything I'm teaching you here can also be used with uh, native Android and Java, native iOS and Objective-C and Swift. So that's interesting, I'm missing an image here. There was an image here. What happened to my image? There you go. Where was my image? Okay. I blame the screen. So, all right, so this is the nice image I was supposed to have. No, no, but I mean, seriously, where, where, what happened to my image? Okay, anyway, it was just a nice picture of a woman looking at the clouds. You don't get it, cloud? Okay. I thought it was inspirational. And then, I mean, seriously, I get, I get this. It's like, <laughs> that's kind of depressing. All right, hopefully the rest of the presentation is not gonna be like this. So, um, so basically, okay, so we've already established at some point you need to run your stuff in the cloud because there's two, th two ways you can do things. You can either do things by, um, by either building your own infrastructure, and that was the next slide. Hopefully the next slide works better. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're back. Um, so let's say that you want to do this yourself. You need a cloud infrastructure. So you're basically going to do all of this. You're going to buy hardware, you're going to configure the machines, the storage, the networking cards, the CPUs. So all of this is the hardware stuff. Then you're going to have to configure the virtual machine because we don't put server operating systems directly on the hardware anymore. We put multiple virtual machines on the hardware so we can optimize them. And then you'll have to build an like, operating system and install the runtime like a web server, a database server, and configure all the security, the access control lists, you know, a whole bunch of IT pro stuff, like networking people stuff. I don't know about you, but I'm a developer. I hate networking stuff. Because, I mean, how do we secure things as a developer? We go to the, the security settings. We say, everyone, full control. And we're done. <laughs> and it works. But then they ask you later, and they say, so is it secure? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Um, yeah, because apparently you can't just like open the pipe for everybody, uh, otherwise you run into issues. All I want to do is build this and do my data and the access to my data. Everything else couldn't care less for any of that stuff. Now, the cloud providers have said, hey, we'll make it easy on you. You know, if you need, you want machines? I got machines. You want a machine? I got a machine. Machines for everyone. You want a machine? You want a machine? You can have a machine. So. In the cloud, you say, we, you can get the virtual machine, you ask me for a machine, I give you a machine, you pay for the machine, you use the machine, okay? Then, um, but after that, yeah, sorry, you're on your own. You still have to install the operating system, configure the access control lists, configure the networking ports, and all that stuff and everything. And I'm like, but I'm a developer, I don't want to do that. Because th this is what we call infrastructure as a service. They only give you the hardware with a virtual machine and you're configuring it yourself. This is where, like, Amazon is good here. You know, they give you machines. This is where they've made their name. But you're on your own after that. As a developer, not very friendly. What I want is a provider that's going to say, I'm going to give you all this, and you just worry about this. That is developer friendly. So this is infrastructure as a service, and this is platform as a service. And what I'm going to teach you today is how you can use platform as a service for mobile development. Where in the end, you just say, hey, I'm building an app. So here's the app name. And you're going to give me some storage for it. And I'm not going to have to install a database. I'm not going to have to create a schema even. I'm not going to have to configure virtual machines, install patches on the operating system, none of that stuff. And then later, you can then sell your software as a service but that's another thing. The key here today is we're talking about this. Okay. So in Azure, so in case you didn't know, Azure is the name of our cloud. You wouldn't know it because we have a lot of ads on TV that talk about the Microsoft cloud, but yet when we show up, we tell you, yeah, it's called Azure. So, um, and I hear that in Ukrainian, Azure means kind of like cool or something like that. Somebody explaining to me. Yeah, so it's a great name, right? In English, it means blue. Um, so Azure, yeah, Azure is a color. So um, Azure gives you a bunch of services. There's services for web developers. So you can easily create a website. 
There's services for mobile developers, so you can easily create the back end to an app. And there's also, you can create APIs that access this, and you can also put business logic. Today, we're just going to talk about this right here. And then, and I'll get to a demo. Most of the session after that is going to be spent in demos. Uh, let's just skip that. Okay, the, the three main services that as a mobile developer that you will need is data storage. So first of all, it's usually very simple collection-based data. I give you a piece of information with some kind of an ID so I can retrieve it later. And then we save it there, you send it back, we're all good. Um, the data storage is going to be NoSQL storage. It's actually going to use a SQL Server database under the hood, but you don't see it. It's all done as a NoSQL interface, so you get a nice API for it. And then you're going to have authentication. Now, um, anybody here ever designing their own authentication system, you know, where they have to track the usernames and passwords and everything? Yeah? Yeah, it's not fun. Because especially, it's not fun for you as a developer because you have to build the whole thing. And trust me, the users don't like it either because the last thing that users want is another username and password to remember. Because what they'll end up doing is using the same username and password as some other important website, like, I don't know, their bank info or something, because some people are just stupid, you know? Um, and they'll use the same username and password everywhere. And then what happens when your app is not secure and then you're hacked, and then all of your users' data ends up out there, and then people use the username and password from your system and they try it on their Amazon account or their bank account or something, and then they get in because they use the same account. So bottom line is do not build your own authentication system. Okay, just use the existing ones. There's so many options. And the cool thing is Azure is going to give you easy access to existing authentication systems so that you can ask the user to authenticate via their Facebook account or via their Twitter account or via their Microsoft account, like, you know, like uh, their Hotmail or Xbox Live or whatever it's called, the Microsoft account, or their Google ID if they have a Gmail or a Google Plus, or if they're in the enterprise with Active Directory. And once this is configured, and it's very easy, I'll show you, um, do you know how many lines of code it takes to authenticate a user, for example, on Twitter? One. It takes one line of code. And I'll show you. Um, and then finally, there's push notifications. Now, you, the server at some point needs to send information down to the client, to the user, uh, whether it's a breaking news, alert, uh, weather alert, or you know, job update, or something like that. And then you need to be able to communicate with the native platform of the user. Therefore, uh, you need to be able to communicate with the push engine of each major platform. So that means Azure can talk to Windows Notification Service, of course, um, to Apple Push Notification Service for iOS devices like iPads, iPhones, and even Macs as well, uh, to Google Cloud Messaging for Android devices that use GCM. Uh, we even support like Amazon Messaging Service, uh, and then there's Baidu as well for Android devices in China. So very, um, uh, very flexible. There's APIs for all that. And last slide before demo. Um, the cool thing is when you create a mobile app, you will create a backend for that app. So you will just give a name to the backend, and then the ba Azure Mobile Services will automatically create like a storage area where the information can be stored. And the cool thing is that it will automatically create an API that is accessible via REST calls. So you will give it a name like my mobile service, it's already taken, has to be unique here. Okay, so you can say, you know, something something dot Azure mobile dot net. And by the way, I own something something. I already took it. Uh, so find your own. Uh, and then that's going to be the unique URL of your service. And this is not a public-facing website, okay? Users are not going to go to that. It's an application that's going to connect with this. And then you're going to have tables. And then after that, you're going to have the name of the table you want to access. And a mobile service can have one or more tables. It can have zero even if you want, because you could create a custom API if you wanted. And then for each table, you will automatically have the four CRUD operations created for you so that you can do a create, a read, an update, or a delete in your table. So a nice API pre-created for you. So let's look at that in action. OK. 
Okay, so first of all, um, if you do not have an Azure account, you simply go to, you can just open a browser, you go to azure.com, it's gonna redirect you to the Azure front page, okay? Well, I make myself that no thanks, I don't have time for surveys right now. Um, <clears throat> once you get to this wonderful page, you notice how we have nice like curved walls for the servers here? I've never seen a data center with curved walls. I think this is from our Death Star data center. So, okay, uh, <clears throat> so free trial right here. You push this and that's gonna take you to uh, our free trial that's gonna give you a $200 credit in, um, in Azure. This is valid for a month, but the cool thing is the service that I'm gonna tell you about today, like is Azure Mobile Services, there's a free tier. And the free tier means that even once your trial exp expires and you become what we call pay as you go, which means you only pay for what you use, as long as you're within the quota of the free tier, you don't have to pay for it. So for example, if I come here to pricing, and if you wonder about how much any service costs, you just come, for example, to mobile services right here, and then it's gonna show you, hey, look at that, free. Free is good, right? So, so you can have up to 10 services you can create. So that's 10 mobile app backends. But the quota is basically cumulative, okay? So when you sum all of them up, you can make up to 500,000 API calls to your mobile service per month, and it's gonna be free. So what that means is if you build a mobile app and your app is a failure because nobody downloads it, it didn't cost you anything because you get no users. You can get up to 500 active devices per day. So you could technically have 5,000 users, but as long as no more than 500 of them use the app on a daily basis, you're still within the quota. So 500 active devices per day, 500,000 API calls per month. So making a call to the server, say, give me some rows, comes back, one call, okay? For the sum of your services. So when you, if you have three services, the sum of the API calls have to be 500,000. And then, um, and then for push notifications, whenever the server is gonna send a push notification down to the device, you can have up to one million push notifications per month sent to your user. So again, you can see how if you have an app that nobody likes or, I don't know, it doesn't catch on or anything, then it doesn't cost you anything. In the next tier up, it's not like it's super expensive. We're talking $15 a month here. So that's like, what, less than 400 rivnias? Something like that, is that how you say it, rivnias? So, sorry? Of course, no, but again, you can put caps on this. And the bottom line is if you have a lot of users, well, I hope you know how to monetize your users. Because if you just give the app for free, with no ads and no money, no, no, no payment or whatever, well, I'm sorry, but that's your fault. So <laughs> it's, you're supposed to kind of monetize it. So for $15 a month, then you get 1.5 million calls, unlimited devices. Now there's no limit on the number of devices you can have, and you can get up to 10 million pushes per month. And that's what you get per chunks of $15. So anyways, the bottom line is, if your app doesn't catch on, it costs you nothing. So now let's go back to when you go, once you created your account, you log into the portal and then you see this, this nice portal here. So there's, there's two portals. I'm showing you the current portal, not the preview portal right now, because the mobile services, you, you can choose two types of backend for your mobile services, either JavaScript, which is Node.js, or um, .NET, which is Web API. Um, I like to Node.js because it's so easy. So, and that one is still in preview in the new portal. So in the current portal, that's the one here. So here I've got mobile services. So if you wanna create a new service, you just come here, you say create new, mobile service, create, and then you just have to type the name of your service. And it's gonna be the, the name here, dot azure mobile dot net. So for example, if I say uh, dev day Kiev, Hey, it's free, so somebody can take that if you want, okay? So, and then you just, uh, here, you can either use an existing SQL database on your account or you can create a new one. 
And then if you have more than one Azure subscription, like I do, you just pick a subscription, otherwise you just have the one. Um, then you pick a region right here. So for example, like East Asia, North Europe, this is just like where the data is physically gonna be located in the world. And it's replicated within the region, but of course after that you can add replication across regions, but then you have to pay more for that. But don't worry, your data is safe. Um, and then you pick a backend, that's the important one here. You pick either JavaScript or .NET. This is basically, if you're gonna write some custom code, so whenever you go save something, you have the option of saying, hey, run this script when I save, or run this script when I retrieve data, or run this script when a user updates the data. So this you choose if you're gonna write that code in .NET, in this case it's gonna be an ASP.NET Web API app, or if you write it in JavaScript. I recommend starting with JavaScript, because it's super easy, unless if you're super comfortable with .NET and Web API already, then you're gonna have much more power with this. So once your service is created, you click Create. It takes usually two, three minutes to create it. And then you're gonna be greeted with something like this, right here. It's gonna say, your mobile service was created, now let's connect it to an app. Remember, now you have the back end of an app, and now you need to connect it to a, a client, a client application. Um, <clears throat> so you notice how these, these different tabs here, like the dashboard, data, API. So if you come to the dashboard, so this shows you, so I was testing my app earlier to make sure it works. So you can see a little bit of data here on this service. So this is a dashboard that shows you the level of activity on it. And at the bottom here, you've got like auto scale. So you can decide like you were, somebody was saying like, what if you know the thing explodes and so many users come? You can choose to either leave the scaling fixed or auto scaling as the users come. Uh, and then here it tells you the number of calls that have been made. So. I basically have one active device per day, uh, and then zero gigabytes data out, and then seven calls have been made, so I still have 16,667 calls that I can make that day for this, because it's 500,000 a month. And then, so you can see all of it here, basically. So you get all your data, you can control everything, there's no bad surprises, and so you've got your URL is right here, and then you can come and inspect your data. So let, let's have a little fun, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come to the uh, data tab and I'm gonna create a new table. So I got my new table, to do item, VS Live data. This is something I did at VS Live in uh, New York recently. So let's create a new table called uh, Dev Day Kiev. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do something you're never supposed to do, okay? It's just for the purposes of how easy it can be. Because here you're supposed to say, what are the permissions for that table? So the insert permissions can be either everyone, anybody with the application key. So the application key is a unique key that's generated on the server, and as long as an application has that key, then it is allowed to insert, update, create, uh, delete, or uh, read. So, um, so you can say either anybody with the key, only authenticated users will get back to that, or only scripts and admins. So here, I'm gonna say what you should never say. I'll say everyone. Yeah, so if you're, so the question is, can you reclaim or regenerate your application? So let's say your key it becomes compromised. Like you put it on screen in front of a presentation at Dev Day Kiev, and then people take a picture of your key, and then you're like, <gasps> Crap, um, so you can just go recreate it, I'll show you. So I'm gonna say everyone for now, I'm gonna accept that, so now Dev Day Kiev is gonna be open. So when you come to the main service, if I come to the dashboard, you see at the bottom it says manage keys, so you click on manage keys, and then it shows you the keys right here, no pictures please, okay? And then if it becomes compromised, you can just click regenerate, it's gonna invalidate the current key and give you a new one. But then of course you have to make sure that any application that was using that key is gonna be updated with the new key, otherwise, not gonna work. Okay, so my table is being created right here, Dev Day Kiev. Uh, what I'm gonna do is we'll do a little exercise for fun. And I have this little web app, which is another side of the web services, the, the, of the app services avail available in Azure. And I have one here called Web Message. And Web Message is very, very simple little uh, website, and I'm actually gonna go and edit it 
in Visual Studio Online when it shows up here. So I'll say edit in Visual Studio Online. That's not enabled by default. When you go in the configuration of a web service, of a web app, you have to turn on the switch to say make it editable in Visual Studio Online. And now I can actually see my web page. So it's a simple web page that I've already created. It's very basic jQuery. I have a header that says send a message. And then there's a label that says type your message below. And then we're, I have a little piece of JavaScript here that simply calls on a submit button. It calls, basically, it does a post at https colon slash slash mytable.azuremobile.net slash tables slash, and now I'm not going to use VS Live Data. I'm going to use the one I just created called Dev Day Kiev, like this, okay? And then, okay, now that I'm done with uh, this right here, I never remember if there's a save button in this. I think it saves it automatically. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's my working file right here. Okay, so now what I can do is let's come back to Azure to see if my service was created. Yeah, the following table was successfully created, Dev Day Kiev. Okay, now if I come to my mobile service though, right here, you'll notice that if I come to my table, data, Dev Day Kiev, it is currently empty. Of course, it's a new table, it's completely empty. Now, we can start saving data directly in this if we want. But then you'll say, whoa, 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 Nick, you did not create the schema for your table, you know, labeling like which columns you're going to save. No need, because there's this really cool feature in mobile services, let's go to configuration, called dynamic schema. So whatever object you send to it, like a JSON object that you send to it, it will automatically take the fields of that object and will create the columns that you need to save that object in your table. So you don't even have to create the schema if you want. You can create it if you want, of course. And usually it's recommended that when you go to production, you turn off that, you turn that off because it's easy during development, but then after that, you turn it off once your schema has been locked down. Okay, so now um, my website right here has been uh, saved, I think. Let's just double check. So if I close this and if I come back to my mobile website. I should have remembered this if it's automatic or not. Uh, if I go to web message, okay, and if I go back to my dashboard, okay, and then if I come right here, if I just wait for edit in Visual Studio Online, I just wanna make sure that it did save it. Yeah, DevDKF, that was automatic. Okay, so now let's, let's have fun, okay? We're gonna come back here. I'm gonna grab the URL, which is um, web message, copy link. I'm gonna open a browser window right here. I'm gonna paste this here, and it's webmessage.azurewebsites.net. You guys go there. Take your phones out. Come on, you, you, you moved your chairs. You can at least get your phones out. Okay, hopefully the Wi-Fi is gonna work. And go, go to web message, webmsg.azurewebsites, all in one word, dot net. Okay, you're gonna see this little web page show up. It's supposed to be a mobile web page, which is it's kind of like wide here on screen. And I'll say, "Hey, this is Nick on stage. Please put something in English so I can actually read it. Because if you write something in Ukrainian, for all I know, you might be insulting me, and I won't know." Message submitted. Okay, who's doing it right now? Okay, web. WEBMSG.AzureWebsites.net. Uh, you, no, you just need to type it HTTP. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go automatically. There's no HTTPS. Okay, the page shows up. You write something in the text box. You click Submit Message just once. It's going to give you OK. All right, and now what I'm going to do is come back here to my mobile service. And I'm going to go to My Table data, and I'm going to open Dev Day Kiev, and let's see, do we have some entries? Yo, wow, you guys have been busy. How easy was that, right? The Wumble service was created, I mean, I didn't, all I did is create new service, okay? You didn't see the creation because I didn't want it to take too long, but all I did is create 
new, I gave it a name, and that's it. I did not write a single line of code. The API was automatically created for me. I temporarily opened it up so anybody with, you know, without the application key can actually save to it. And now you can see, like, you recognize all your messages, right? So they're all here. And if I go down, there's like, wow, there's a page too. So there you go. Some people find it very funny. Awesome session. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, there you go. So everything is being saved in here. So it's a tiny little script from a web page, but it's just to show you how easy it is after that from a mobile service because it's just an HTTP post. So anything that, that you can write that can send data via HTTP post, now you can save it in the cloud just like this. Okay? Now, I'm going to cut you guys off. And uh, I'm going to come back here to my table. I'm going to click permissions. And now I'm going to say anybody with the application key is required for this one. So no more freebies. No, you're not going to get an error because I didn't put the error in my app. So but you can still try, but it's not going to show up. So. Um, all right, so that's it. So now I've secured it. Okay, the next phase. So now that you've seen how easy it is to create a service and how you automatically get this nice little REST API created automatically for you, uh, what happens when you want to create a mobile app to connect to this? So what you do is you, come, you can come back to the main root of your, your service right here. And remember when there was like a nice page that said like uh, you've created your service that's connected to an app? Usually what you're going to do is you're going to come here and go, how do I go back to that? Because there was a place where it generates code for me. So some really like brilliant people at Microsoft decided that this should be a clickable button. <laughs> and that's where it is. There you go. So come back to that here. And then it says, choose a platform. I love this. Choose a platform. Windows, iOS, Android, HTML, JavaScript, Xamarin, and PhoneGap. So these are basically, what it's going to do is it's automatically going to create a little application for you that's going to be pre-wired with your proper key in there. It's even going to go write the key in the code, and then you'll just download a zip file, and you're going to open it up. So if you say, hey, I would like to create an iOS application, you, can, you have two options. You can say either create a new iOS app. It's first going to ask you to create a to-do item table. It's basically a to-do list app. So you can either go to the tables and name a table to do, ta to do item, or you can push that button, it's going to create it for you. Um, or, and then after that, you say which language you would like your demo app to be written in. We have Swift and Objective-C right here. Or let's say that you say, hey, you know what? Um, you guys learned Xamarin earlier, and you guys love Android here in Ukraine. So let's say, like, give me a, uh, a new Xamarin app where you can say a Xamarin iOS or a Xamarin Android app, which is going to be in C Sharp. Or let's say that you want to connect an existing app. Let's say you already started writing your app. And now you just want, like, you just want to know, like, what do I need to do to easily go save you know, data in there? So it's going to tell you right here a couple things. It's going to, first of all, um, it's going to tell you to, um, to install, well, sorry, at the top here. It's going to say that you need to, uh, you're going to have to go to NuGet and install the Windows Azure Mobile Services. Okay, so the components, so use the store for the Azure Mobile Services. You're going to search that in NuGet and you're gonna ins it's going to install the package for you. Then you're going to write using Services. Then it's going to say go put in the main uh, application code, startup code. You're going to go put this right here, static mobile service client equals my table, which is the name of my service, dot Azure Mobile. In your case, it's going to be your service name is going to show up here. And the key here is your actual key for your service. And then you're going to have to create the item table. And it's going to say, go create now an item class. The item class is going to have two properties, an ID and a text string. And then finally, um, this is all the code that's required to go save this in the cloud. You're going to say current platform dot init and then a new item where the text equals whatever you want. Like take it from the text box, for example. And then you say await app delegate dot mobile service dot get table item. Insert async with the name of the item. And that's it. 
That's all you need to now add support for your mobile service to save collection data in the cloud using Xamarin, Android, and C Sharp. If you look at a similar example with Android and Java, it's going to show you all the instructions for Java and Eclipse or Android Studio. Same thing with iOS, or if you want, if, you, if you're getting started and you don't have an app already, you can just say, hey, create a new Xamarin app instead. And I'll say Xamarin Android download. It's going to give you a zip file. You open the zip file in Visual Studio, and then what you're going to get is this right here. OK, I've already done it. I did not change anything in the code. All I did is click download, open it up here, and then you see I have my to-do activity right here, if you remember the activity from earlier in my Xamarin talk. OK, mobile service client is right here. We're using Microsoft.WindowsAzure.MobileServices. And I've added the package already. In this case, it, we don't even have to add the package from NuGet because the project is already created for you. So you, the moment you rebuild, it's automatically going to download the NuGet package for you because it's in the project reference. And then uh, here, iMobile service sync table, because this one actually has offline sync. This is a little more advanced, this demo it gives you here, because if you download some data, and then later the mobile app is disconnected from the server, you still have the data locally on the device. So the user can still access their data, and it synchronizes with the server. This is all done for free for you. Application URL, my table, my key is there. And then uh, when it's time, so a new mobile service client, URL, application key, then get sync table to do item. And uh, after that, here, when we, it's time to go save in there, let me just go find it on create option, item selected, sync async, on refresh, refresh item from table. This is all code that's created for you. Check item, add item right here. So add item, which is say var item equals new to-do item with text box here, complete false because it's a to-do list. And then this is the only line of code you need to save. Await to-do table dot insert async, the name of the item. And then you simply sync asynchronously and it's gonna save it automatically for you. So if you wanna see what it looks like, I'm gonna run it. I, I pre-started my Android emulator here. So I'm just going to run it directly on this one right here. That's the one I've already started. And now it's going to load for me. And that's going to give you, the cool thing is it's going to give you a nice little application that's fully functional. And then from there, you can just go build your own. What the cool thing is, the type of application it gives you is basically a to-do list. It's a list of to-do items. and. Um, the, once you know how to build a list, you can do a lot of things. You guys know Yelp? No? Yelp for restaurants and stuff like that? You don't use it? Okay, anyway, very popular app. Yelp is basically a list of restaurants and bars and stuff like that. Uh, what is Twitter? Twitter is a list of tweets of people that you follow. Uh, Instagram is a list of photos that were posted by people that you follow. WhatsApp is a list of uh, chat messages that were posted by people that you're communicating with. Once you know how to build a mobile list, you can build a lot of stuff, okay? So now, my, my table already existed here in the server, so the, the app is new, but if I go look at my table data, if I go to to-do item, you can see here that I already had three items, like hotel checkout, have a drink at the reception later, very important, and then write an awesome evaluation for Nick. Um, and if I look here, there you go. So my three items are here. Now I can come and add another one. I can come say, um, did I click on it? Why is it not responding? There's always something. Come on. Let me just make sure my app is not frozen for some reason. Doesn't look like it. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I thought I was running this earlier. So, my table. There you go. 
for some reason it's not letting me click on anything how to add a to do item I wanted to go check something I could like write an awesome eval for Nick now by checking it it's now saved it uh, in the cloud so now if I actually it didn't save it okay there's something going on here I blame the network let's see if I refresh this Oh yeah, right in awesome eval was flagged true, so it did save it for that. But why the app is not letting me save here? I don't know. Something is not responding on this. Anyways, um, not a big deal. You got to see it in action with the web. Anyways, there's one last thing I want to show you. Really important is now. Let's say you want to add authentication to your app, right? Okay. So how do you do this? So for this, I'm going to close Android. I'm not going to use Android anymore. And what I'm going to do is load another little app called Weather Talk right here. Weather Talk is a Windows 10 app. So it's the same principle pretty much everywhere. Um, the first thing is you need to choose what is going to be your authentication scheme. You can either give a choice to the user. So sometimes what you can say is, hey, you, we support Facebook, we support Twitter, we support everything. So you let the user choose. Or you can just support one at first, and then maybe over time you can support more depending on demand or something like that. Um, in this case, I've pre-chosen Twitter for this one because it's a popular one, especially amongst technology people. So um, the first thing you need to do is go to your service. So this one, it's actually the service is called Hello Weather. So it's just another, uh, another mobile service I've created. There's one table in there called Location. Okay. Uh, inside of this here, if I look at the um, configuration, So, no, sorry, identity is what I wanted. So identity, this is where you're going to go and save the various, like, credentials. Because before you can authenticate with Twitter or before you can authenticate with Facebook or something, you need to go create that setup on their own portal over there. And we have all in the documentation. It's all there. We show you all the steps where to go for this. So Microsoft account, I'm not supporting right now in this one, Facebook. But you see hi, here I have Twitter. I have an API key and I have an API secret. All I need to do is basically to pre-populate this. Don't type random numbers, it won't work. Okay, so to do this, you're gonna go to Twitter and you're gonna go to apps.twitter.com. Okay, you log in to apps.twitter.com with your own Twitter account. You don't need to have a developer account. Every Twitter account is a developer account. So you just need to go there. Your list of apps is gonna be completely empty and then you're gonna go and see, create a new app. So whenever you create a new app, you're going to have to give like a name to the app and the URL. And, um, and then after that, you're going to have to, in the settings, there's one important checkbox you'll have to put. So here, the name is Hello Weather. Description, I've populated this. Uh, the website, in this case, we're not using, we're not doing authentication for a website. So you're kind of supposed to put the website of your your company or your app or something like that, even though it's technically not used inside of the authentication. This is the important one right here. You need to make, you need to put a callback URL and you need to make sure that the checkbox here is checked that says allow this application to be used to sign in with Twitter because you're going to authenticate with Twitter. It's OAuth. Okay. The callback URL is always going to be the name of your mobile service that you've created. So that's something, something that you created or dev day Kiev or whatever, your mobile service dot azure dash mobile dot net slash login slash Twitter. So for you, the only thing you need to change is the hello weather here. You're going to put in the name of your own mobile service there that you've created. Once you've done that and you save the settings in the keys and access tokens, Twitter will automatically generate this. It will give you a consumer key, which is the API key, and a consumer secret, which is the API secret. You take those two values, you copy, paste them here, and you're done. Now you can authenticate with Twitter. So in the client application, next, what you need to do is if I come uh, here, inside of my app. So I'm using Windows Azure dot mobile services. Um, here I have my mobile service, mobile service client connects to hello weather with my key right here. Okay. And then, um, that's basically 
all I need at this point in this one. When I come to my main page, before I can load my main page, now I'm going to create a mobile service user. So I lied. It's technically two lines of code. Um, mobile service user right here. Okay. And then it's using the same open weather map service. This is also a weather app. Once I find a good API, I use it to death. Um, so open weather map service right here. But then what I simply do is, um, sorry, my user in the on navigated to, I call authenticate async. And authenticate async is this code. No, I passed it. This code right here, authenticate async. It's a it's code that returns a task. Um, you can say like, hey, that's a lot of code here, but this is just because I'm making sure that it worked. The only line of code you need is this here. User, so the mobile client user equals await app.mobileservice.login async, and then I call mobile service authentication provider dot Twitter, or it could be dot Facebook or dot uh, Google or dot Microsoft, okay? Once this is done, I'm gonna get a user back. So now I can go check data, whoops. I can go check data on my user. For example, here I just put a pop-up that says uh, you're currently logged in. Uh, sorry, uh, oh, you're now, right here, message equals string.format. You're now signed in as user.userid. Or if I had put like username, it would have shown like active nick. User ID is my Twitter number. It's a random number whenever you first created. And then I simply display that right here. Now, you guys ever like log in with Facebook or Twitter somewhere? You know how usually you show up at the, the app or the web page and then you're redirected to a, an official Twitter or Facebook page and it says, please log in with your Twitter account and then you log in and then it tells you Hey, this user, uh, this app wants to you connect, you know, to Twitter. Do you accept? You say allow, and then the moment you click allow, it finishes and it sends you back to the app. Now, that whole thing that I just described—that's the line of code right here. All right, let me show it to you. So I'm going to run the app. I've deliberately de-authenticated myself on this one, so that you get to see the process. I'm going to maximize this, like right here. So it logs into the app. It's my splash screen. Then it's going to load the main page of the app. And hopefully, the demo cooperates with the connection, because this is all network dependent. Connect into a service. I didn't create this, by the way. This is my one login line of code that created all this. Gives me a nice pop up. It says, authorize Hello Weather to use your account. This is an official Twitter page. Okay. I'm going to log in with give Nick, okay, put in my password, okay, you can remember if you want later so you don't have to do this every time, but for per demo purposes, I don't do it. I click sign in. In this case, I've already been authenticated. You even have an option in Windows that's supported so that you can say skip, the, you know, yes, remember this for the future so I don't have to do this every time. In this case, I'll say skip it. You're a nice signed in Twitter user. That's it. So the whole pop-up scheme you saw there, that was one line of code automatically done for me. And then once I come here to my service, so let's say I go to Hello Weather, and I come back to the top on my data. If I look at my locations, I can see here that I have four locations pre-saved, Princeton, London, Paris, and New York. If I go to my permissions on this one, the permissions will clearly say only authenticated users. So just having the application key is not enough. It has to be a user that has been authenticated. So then later after that, what you can do is you can go associate the data with the user. So when you retrieve the data, you only retrieve the data of that user. So it's up to you to do the authorization like this to basically connect the user with their data. But at least you have a, an authenticated user. So if somebody shows up anonymously and tries to read data or tries to uh, post data, not going to work. Mobile service will just block it completely. So now I can come here and I can say, hey, give me the weather in Kiev, Ukraine. Search returns the weather right here. 
Okay, it actually talks as well, but this is not the point of the demo. So Kiev right here is saved. So now I can come back to Azure. I come back to my browse section. And now I can see right here, Kiev just showed up in my list of records. And I can actually see the Twitter user of that. And it shows me which scheme was used and this. And the way that you do this, that you save this, that's the, when I remember when I said you can actually customize the back end to write your own code, you click on script. And on script, it's gonna show you the four scripts, insert, update, delete, and read. And then you can come and write whatever piece of JavaScript you want here so that you run, it will run this on every insert or on every read. In this case, by default, it was already doing request.execute. Here, we just added item.userID equals user.userID. We take the user ID we received, we attach it to the item, boom, done. Whereas later, what you could do is instead of inside of the app, you know, retrieving only your value, you pass your user ID to the server, and on the server, on the, it's not doing it now, but for example, on the read, then you would take the user, and then you would only retrieve your own records and retrieve those for the user. So this way, it's all secured in the cloud. So nobody can hack it on the client. They basically have to be who they say they are. All right, so it's as easy as that. If you want to do more advanced stuff, for example, like I have, um, a, I have a blog post and a video that I've posted on my blog uh, last year. Uh, it's called Azure Chatter. It's a live app that I have in a store. It's basically a, uh, it's a chat application, you know, kind of like WhatsApp. When WhatsApp was acquired for $19 billion, I thought that's so disgusting in terms of money, I think my battery's dying, uh, that um, I figured I could have written that app, you know? And I, I figured I'll prove it, and I did. It took me six days, and I wrote a basic app client that was Android and Windows, and I did it here. And then, this is all chat info here. I'm not revealing secrets. It's a public chat app, everything. It's an open chat room. If I look at my scripts, every time you go save, like a chat in the cloud, it basically sends a push notification to everybody to say, hey, somebody said something, you know, so you can see the notification. And when the app is running, I intercept the notification, and instead of showing a toast, I just display it directly inside of the app. So you see here, how in, my, in my insert script, I'm actually using Azure Notification Hubs. I got my own ID here for my hubs, and then I execute my request, and then on hub.wns, Windows Notification Service, I send a toast with the username and the text that was sent, on Google Cloud Messaging, I send this JSON payload with the item and the username. And with, on Apple devices, I say, again, different payload in JSON with item and username, and I say hub APNS. And to configure this, it's simply just a procedure of getting the proper key from Google for GCM, getting the proper certificate from Apple for APNS, and it's all documented in there. So this is where, for example, I would put an insert script, and it's all JavaScript, so basically node running out. And uh, that's it. So that's, uh, that was basically what I wanted to show you guys today. So since we're pretty much out of time, uh, that was the, the push notification part here that I knew I would not have time to cover, just to explain how it works. My blog has more information about this. We have a lot of good videos as well online. Um, so where to go from here? So as you can see, building a backend for an app, really simple. You create a service, automatically creates an API for you. You can now save data in the cloud. And with just a couple lines of code, you can authenticate your user to make sure that their data only shows up in there. Um, we had, uh, in my deck, there's a lot of information like uh, how to get started with Azure for free, how to get free cloud courses on Microsoft Virtual Academy. The deck is already online on my slide share. I'll give you the link. So these are more links about Azure, Azure, how to get started, videos, free podcasts, and stuff like that to learn more about it. Um, if you're actually an entrepreneur, we, we have a program called BizSpark where you can get $150 a month of free Azure credits for up to five users in your startup, completely for free for three years. It's basically an MSDN Ultimate subscription. It's the equivalent of $100,000 US of software for three years that we give you completely for free. 
to qualify, you just need to be a startup or an independent with a website and an email. Business is less than five years old, privately owned. You have to write software, and your website has going to show that. And um, oh, that's a tough one. You have to make less than a million dollars US a year. Anybody here make more than that? No? See, I didn't raise my hand either. Um, so this is what you get. For, so it's called Best Park, and that's a program that's available worldwide, including here. Um, so if you're interested in this, you can actually just go apply online. Go to aka.ms slash bizsparkapply. And then you just need to follow the instructions. Tell us about your, your company. It doesn't have to be a properly incorporated company, but you need to have at least a website that talks about what you do as a software developer, whether it's building apps, services, or maybe what you plan on doing. We have lots of videos online you can watch on Azure and everything. We have, uh, again, this is... I was supposed to have a nice picture of an Indian guy here. There you go. That was the guy you were supposed to see. For some reason, the graphics are not really cooperating here. Anyways, Microsoft Virtual Academy. This is my own course on Cortana I've done. This is the slide you want, okay? So, uh, slideshare.net slash activenic. This is where this slide deck is currently posted right now, including the last one that I did. Uh, my demos that I've done earlier today are all on GitHub. These demos are not really posted because it's the one where you generate it automatically in Azure, so it's pretty easy. Um, so hopefully this was useful for you guys. Earlier today, you saw how you can build with one language across three platforms, and now you just saw how with Azure, you can build a backend for those wonderful apps, all using Azure with no risk, all free. So hopefully you build something great. If you do, uh, tweet me once your app goes live. I'll happily go check it out. I would love to see what people are building. In the meantime, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for having me here in Kiev and for welcoming me so well uh, right here. And I'm going to be downstairs as well to answer questions and have a drink. So thanks, guys.